Hi, I'm Tony Northrup, and today I'm going to address one of the most common questions and maybe misunderstandings that I hear, pixel density versus noise. Uh, I'm also going to use as an example the Sony a7S, which is a 12 megapixel full frame camera versus the very high pixel density Nikon D810. So first, let's cover what is noise just with an example. Here's a picture taken at ISO 500 on an APS-C camera, and at this scale, it looks pretty clean. But when you zoom in to the background, you see all these little speckles. Sometimes the speckles will be show color noise, they'll show like red, green, blue splotches, and sometimes they'll just be luminance noise, variations. This should be nice and smooth. It's a blurry background out of focus. You should not see, you should not look at two different pixels and see big chunks like that. This is zoomed in like three to one if you're watching at 1080p. So if the pixels look fat, that's because they're zoomed in. Pixel density is a measurement of how many pixels there are per like square millimeter in a sensor. So the Sony a7S has a sensor that's the same size as the Nikon D810, but the Sony a7S has 12 million pixels in that full frame sensor. The D810 has 36 million. So the D810 is cramming three times more pixels in the same space. And they hear all the time that cameras with higher megapixels have more noise. And the reason given is that, well, in the case of the D810 versus the A7S, each pixel in the D810 is getting one third less light. Therefore, it must have three times more noise. So let's explore that a little bit further. Uh, first, I want to draw the distinction between how we view pictures uh, taken with different size sensors, with sensors that have different megapixels. And there are two ways to do this, uh, the scaled version versus the one-to-one -one version. The scaled version on the left is how we view pictures when we make a print. Uh, if you take a 12 megapixel picture with an A7S and you take a picture of the same scene with the D810, you'll print them both at 8 by 10 or 20 by 30 or whatever you print them at. Even though they have different numbers of pixels, you cram them into the same space. So that's scaled. So in that case, there are three pixels on the D810 that are actually being pushed into the same space as one pixel from the A7S. So even though each pixel is getting one third the light, the same total light is being related to the same amount of image space. Scaling also happens when we view pictures on the web, on our phones, any other type of screen. We don't look at pictures from a D810 bigger than the A7S and then try to compare them one to one. However, I see a lot of people doing comparison tests at one to one. So they'll zoom in one to one in Lightroom or at say DP review, they have a great uh, comparison website for allowing you to compare images from different cameras, but they always do this at one to one. So when you look at these pixels at one to one, of course, something like the D810 where each pixel is getting one third the light looks noisier than an A7S, which is getting three times the light per pixel. But so, if scaling the images combines multiple pixels together from a higher megapixel camera, we might end up seeing images that are just as clean from a high megapixel camera as from a low megapixel camera. But let's explore this with some actual data by asking the question, does pixel density impact noise? Going through DxO Mark for all cameras from 2014, here I've charted the pixel density at pixels per square millimeter. That's the horizontal axis down here versus the ISO score that DxOMark provides, which is uh, on the, the left side, the vertical axis, higher pixel density scores up top with the 3200 here provide uh, l l cleaner images. <laughs> Down at the bottom where it says like 400 and 800, these are much noisier images. So looking at the ISO versus the pixel density, it would seem like lower pixel densities provide higher ISO scores and therefore cleaner images. However, there's another factor that we can maybe correlate here because correlation is not necessarily causation. So we need to look for other factors. If we plot the sensor size versus the pixel density uh, with the sensor size over on the left and pixel density remaining on the, the horizontal axis here, we see that bit larger sized sensors up here at the top have a lower pixel density than smaller sensors, which makes sense because a micro four third sensor is very small and it tends to be 16 megapixels. Most APS-C cameras have uh, 
a, a 1.5x crop, a smaller sensor, but they have 24 megapixels. And most full frame cameras have a bigger sensor, but most of them are also around 24 megapixels. So as sensor size get, sizes get bigger, the pixel density drops. And this chart just shows that. But what if, what if we factor out the sensor size? and we scale up the ISO scores, pretending that all the sensors were, were full frame. What we see here, instead of a diagonal line showing some sort of relationship, is a completely flat line. That, uh, well, with the dotted line here that shows kind of the average of all these, we see this shows no correlation between the relative ISO, factoring out the sensor size, and the pixel density of the sensor. What we're saying is that if all sensors were the same size. Even regardless of pixel density, they would all have about the same amount of noise. And to me, this shows that according to DxO mark scores, there is no relationship between pixel density and noise. So does pixel density impact noise? No. Um, and what can we learn from this particular lesson? Well, first, I want people to stop comparing pictures at one to one. <laughs> this will always mislead you. This will always make the camera with the lower pixel density look better. When in fact, it's probably the camera with more megapixels that will look better because it will extract more detail. We'll look at that in a little bit. So always scale your pictures. If you're comparing for detail, if you want to see how much sharpness they get, then scale the smaller picture up to the size of the larger picture. So what I'll do is I'll go into Lightroom and I'll look at the resolution of both images. Whichever one has is, whichever one is wider, I'll note the number of pixels wide it is, like 7,000 pixels, and then I'll export both pictures at 7,000 pixels. You can do that from the export dialog in Lightroom. Just make sure you allow an image to be upscaled. So scale a smaller picture up when you wanna compare detail. When you wanna compare noise, scale the bigger picture down. This will combine multiple pixels into a single pixel, reducing the amount of noise that you see per pixel. That way, when you do go and compare it at one-to-one -one in Lightroom, you will be able to get a better sense for what the two pictures would look like in the real world. Because when you scale the larger picture, picture down, now you have two pictures of the same resolution. And again, when we view pictures in the real world, we always view them at the same scale. So you have to make them the same scale before you start comparing noise on two different cameras. And if you're looking at DxO Mark, use the ISO score and the perceptual megapixels score. Let's take a quick look at that. Just pop over to DxO Mark. Looking at the page for the DA10, this is the number that you should compare between two cameras, the ISO score right here. So if a camera has a higher ISO score, that means it generally has lower noise. DxO Mark is taking into account the scaling when they do this. So they will scale the images to the same size. Therefore, higher pixel density cameras, higher megapixel cameras won't be penalized artificially for that. When you want to compare sharpness, open up a camera and lens combination and look at this number here, perceptual megapixels. Don't just look at the megapixels of the camera. That can be useful, but of course, sharpness depends entirely on the lens being attached to the camera, so you always need to consider both a camera and lens combination. This is important because when you look at cameras like the Sony a7R, this is a very similar sensor, 36 megapixel sensor to the D810, but the Sony lenses tend not to be as sharp as the Nikon counterparts. And we just want to make the point, that's how you would actually take a look at those measurements and, and get some meaningful values out of them. Also at DxO Mark, you should look at the print and not the screen measurements when you get in really deep. And let's pop back over to DxO Mark here. The measurements tab here is really useful and it's where most of the meaningful data is. The ISO score is probably the most useful because they've done some calculations to simplify it a little bit. But if you want to get into the real nitty gritty of it and you go into the measurements and then the signal to noise, signal -to -noise ratio SNR at 18%, this tells you their actual measurement data. Uh, so you can see the amount of decibels of noise. There are two options here, and I see people using screen. Screen compares images at one to one. Each individual pixel, the amount of noise in each individual pixel. If you click print, which is the default, this will scale the images appropriately as we do in the real world. The names are confusing. 
Because, of course, if you're thinking of digital images, you might think, well, I'm looking at it on a screen, therefore I'd want to compare the screen measurements. But this just means it's unscaled. Even when you're looking at it on a screen, in the real world, images are always scaled. The print measurement here is the one that's scaled. So pop back over to the presentation, ask the follow-up question, is the Sony a7S really the best low light camera? And remember this chart? This outlier, the very top camera up there, better than all the other cameras from 2014 or any time before, is the Sony a7S. Notice that it's in the upper left corner. Up at the top means that it had extremely high image quality, extremely low noise. Because it's over to the left, it had very low pixel density because it's a full frame camera, but with only 12 megapixels. Look at the DxO Mark ISO scores here that I just showed you, and you can see the D810 here at the top has an ISO score of 2853, and the A7S has an ISO score of 3700, which is substantially higher, about 0.37 stops higher. Now, you might say a third of a stop isn't that much, uh, but it's a lot. That puts it like four years ahead in technology when they were both released at about the same time. So as, as we look at the how other cameras from 2014 compared, well, the D4S isn't from 2014, and that's also a $7,000 camera. But as we look at all these cameras here in the middle from the 7D Mark II up to the D3300, you'll see they're all in about a range of about one-tenth of a stop. And then you have this outlier, the A7S, which is just much, much better than all these other cameras. So why is it such an anomaly, and is it really that much better? I'm bringing it up because so many people t tell me that pixel density and noise must have a relationship because the A7S is so much better than all these other cameras. I also want to show you exactly what one-third of a stop of noise is. The image here on the left has one-third of a stop less noise than the image on the right. So it's not a huge amount of noise. But as you look at it, you can definitely see that the image on the right is grainier. There's a lot more texture to it. The difference between the whites and blacks is much better. This is a picture of a white wall, by the way. It should be completely smooth, but it was shot at ISO 6400 and then zoomed in really tight just to exaggerate the noise. But relative to each other, that's one third of a stop more noise. Just so you know what to expect as we look at some of these other sample images. Um, now there's a lot of evidence that the A7S is the best low light camera. And to take some stills from videos that we've released showing the video capabilities of the A7S here on the right and the D810 there on the left, you can see the A7S at 51,000, ISO 51,000 is far better than the D810. And as we go up even higher, you can see the A7S image just looks massively, massively better than the D810. But that's video. And video is processed in camera. So the software can change things. And video image quality doesn't necessarily relate to the still image quality that you'll get out of a camera when shooting raw. So as we look at the DxO measurements for the screen noise, which is the per pixel noise, we'll see that the way they measure it shows it at almost two stops better than the D810. And here's a sample image from the A7S on the left and the D810 on the right showing screen noise. So these are both comparing at one pixel to one pixel, not scaled. And we can see that the D810 has noticeably no more noise than the A7S. Though to me it's not two stops better. To me it's maybe one third to one half of a stop better. Look, thinking back to that previous slide that we saw. So I can't explain where they got the measurement of 0.19 stops better at a given ISO. Here's another sample picture that I took that seems to show more noise, just at a different environment. This was this introduced some color because I took a picture of a hardwood floor that was out of focus. And zooming in, we do see far more noise on the D810 than on the A7S. So now let's talk about print noise, which is the noise that we see, at total image noise, when an image is scaled to the same size. And according to DxO Mark's measurements, the A7S has is about 0.36 stops cleaner than the D810. Looking at the sample pictures that we created, these are scaled to the same size. That's the A7S on the left and the D810 on the right. And to my eye, the D810 is noticeably cleaner when comparing these two pictures of a white wall. Comparing these two pictures of the hardwood floor, 
it's close. I, I would say it's too close to call here. Uh, maybe the A7S has it by just a hair, um, but overall it's very similar. The D810 clearly has some different noise characteristics, maybe because the image has been scaled down to 12 megapixels. So let's get a second opinion. D DP Review, uh, great website, takes lots of sample pictures with their own cameras of the same scene. So we can go in and compare them. And here are two, two photos with the two cameras at ISO 6400. That's the A7S on the left. And to my eye, the D810 in this particular shot is noticeably cleaner than the A7S. Now keep in mind, DxOMark tells us that the A7S is a third of a stop cleaner. We should be able to see that difference. But it's close, but the D810 there seems to be better. Looking at another section of it, here, maybe the A7S by hair but it looks really, really close. It's certainly not a third of a stop difference. I would say it's about the same. Another section of their same test chart. Again, this looks very similar. Parts of this image look better on the D810 and parts of it look better on the A7S. One more image. Again, very similar. I think we can see some parts of it that are clearly better on the D810, like the reds up here. Other parts seem to look better on the A7S, like the blues. But if you look at the overall image quality, the overall image quality here on the D810 is, is far, far better because even though it's scaled down to 12 megapixels, the D810 is capturing so much more resolution that we're not seeing weird artifacts in the uh, circles up here, the concentric circles and the lines that are close together. There, there aren't as many patterns and such. So just talking about noise, it's, the two cameras seem to be very, very close. And I, I didn't find any image where the A7S even scaled looked better than the D810. So why does DxOMark say that the A7S is more than a third of a stop cleaner than the D810 when neither my sample images nor DP Review's sample images show that extra third? And I, I feel like I should say, who cares? It's only a third of a stop. Why are we spending so much time debating it? I've talked to a lot of people who specifically bought the A7S for stills because they needed to shoot low light. And DxOMark says it's by far the best camera in the world for shooting low light. I'm researching this because I want to know whether I should push people to the A7S for stills and low light, or if they can get by with another camera like the D810. So my results don't show that. The DP review results don't show that. There could be a few ways to explain it. It could be in the DxOMark testing methodology that the their testing system is confusing the extra detail captured by the D810 for noise because it is capturing three times more detail with all those extra pixels and maybe they're, the system is confusing that for noise. Uh, or maybe the light changed, something else changed between the two different tests. I'd love to see them recompare this. Shoot the two cameras side by side because we tested it similarly and DP Review tested it similarly and none of these tests reflect DP Review's actual results. Whereas every other test we've ever done, I felt completely comfortable when DxOMark released their results. Uh, in the case of the 7D Mark II, I tested it as being better quality than they found it. I went back and retested the 7D Mark II and found out that DxOMark was right. In that case, I retested my own results <laughs> and confirmed DxOMark's results. But no matter what I do, I cannot replicate DxOMark, meet DxOMark's results of saying that the A7S has better image quality when the two, pic, two cameras are scaled to the same size. So the D810 overall is better than the A7S for stills. Many of the pictures were a draw as far as image noise goes, but the D810 is capturing three times more detail. So the sharpness definitely pushes it over the edge. I also just wanted to compare the A7S here on the left to the A7 Mark II, which is also a full frame camera from Sony. It takes the same lenses, it's substantially less expensive, and it has 24 megapixels instead of 12 megapixels. So comparing these two pictures, what we see are very similar levels of noise, but to my eye, the A7 Mark II on the right here actually has a little bit less noise than the A7S on the left. So even the A7 Mark II, cheaper, same brand, same format, seems to have less noise when the two images are scaled together. 
I think the A7R2 is better than the A7S for stills, even at high ISOs, even at low light. These sample images were all taken at ISO 6400. If you're interested in more detail about how cameras work, check out my photography buying guide here on the right. If you're interested in learning Lightroom and post processing, you can get my new Lightroom 6 and CC book. The ebook is ready now, and the uh, paperback book will be shipping very soon. And if you just want to learn photographic techniques, how to actually get out and take great pictures, check out my book, Stunning Digital Photography. They're all available on Amazon, or you can pick them up directly from us at sdp.io slash store. Ebooks are under 10 bucks, and we ship the paperbacks worldwide. If you have any questions, just add a comment down below. And I would really like somebody else who has a D810 and an A7S to try to replicate my results. I want to point out that I used the same lenses on the D810 and the A7S, and that's not the case with DP Review. With DP Review, you can see they used the Nikon 85mm f1.4 on the Nikon and the Sony 55mm f1.8. Both at f5.6, but different lenses have different t-stop measurements. Different lenses let in different amounts of light. So that's one thing that could affect their tests. I'd like to see some other people using the exact same lens with the exact same settings on the two cameras. Uh, because as I found, when I did that, the Nikon overall seemed to be better when the images were scaled together. Anyway, I'm interested in getting other opinions out here. If you have some evidence that shows that higher pixel densities actually do make more noise, let me know. Uh, I also want to point out that in the context of the new Canon 5DSR that's coming out at 50 megapixels and possibly a new Sony that's coming out, I think what it means is we don't have to be afraid of these high megapixel cameras. We can use high megapixel cameras, capture more detail, and it does not introduce more noise. Don't buy a lower megapixel camera just because you think lower megapixels equals less noise. That's your testing methodology throwing it off. You won't see those results in the real world. You'll only see them when you're comparing pictures one to one. Thanks.